you imagine a young boy, just fifteen, leading an entire province? Meet Takeda Shigen. Born in the year 1521, in the heart of the Kai province, Takeda Shigen was not your ordinary child. His birth name was Takeda Katsuchio, and he was the eldest son of the daimyo Takeda Nobutora, a man of power and influence. Yet, destiny had a different path for this boy. At the tender age of 15, he was thrust into a world of war and politics, taking over as the daimyo of Kai province. His ascension, however, was not a smooth transition. It was a coup against his own father, a calculated move that showed the world his cunning and determination. Young Shingen had to navigate the turbulent waters of power, dealing with dissent and rebellion within his own ranks. Early in his rule, he faced a significant challenge from an internal rebellion. Yet, instead of faltering, he demonstrated his natural leadership and tactical brilliance. He quelled the rebellion and solidified his control, proving to his subjects that, despite his age, he was more than capable of leading. But the world of the Daimyo was not just about internal politics. External threats loomed large, and alliances were as brittle as they were crucial. Shingen, young as he was, had to learn quickly the art of diplomacy and the tactics of war. Despite the early struggles, Shingen managed to consolidate his power. He established a formidable administration, introduced land reforms and built a strong military force. He was not just a warrior, but also a visionary who understood the importance of a well-managed realm. His leadership was marked by a blend of strategic acumen and administrative finesse, setting the stage for the ruthless samurai he was to become. And so the foundations were laid. The young boy was no more. In his place stood a formidable leader, ready to carve his path through the annals of history. And just like that, a young boy was thrust into the world of war and politics. Can you guess how Takeda Shingen became a force to be reckoned with in the Sengoku period? In the year of 1564, the landscape of power in the Sengoku period shifted dramatically. The formidable Takeda Shingen set his sights on the Shinano province. Shinano was a jewel of a province, rich in resources and strategically positioned. Through a combination of ruthless warfare and cunning diplomacy, Shingen managed to bring Shinano under his control, significantly expanding his domain. Now let's ponder a bit on Shingen's strategies. This was a man known for his ruthless efficiency in warfare, yet he was also a master strategist. Shingen understood the value of alliances, of manipulation and of psychological warfare. He was known to use a variety of tactics, from outright confrontations to sly subterfuge. His goal was not just to win battles, but to destabilize his enemies, to make them question their alliances, their strategies and even their own abilities. In the conquest of Shinano, Shingen used these skills to their fullest extent. First, he won over key allies within the province, weakening the ruling Suwa clan from within. Then, he launched a series of attacks, not just against the Suwa, but also against other clans in the region. He was relentless, giving his enemies no respite, no chance to regroup or rethink their strategies. His ruthlessness earned him a fearsome reputation. Tales of his ferocity spread far and wide, adding to the psychological warfare he had already implemented. His enemies were not just fighting a man, they were fighting a legend, a force of nature that seemed unstoppable. Shingen's conquest of Shinano was not just about territorial expansion, it was a statement, a declaration to all who would oppose him. He was not just a warlord, he was a force to be reckoned with, a storm that would sweep across the land, leaving nothing but devastation in its wake. In the minds of his enemies, he was not just Takeda Shingen, the leader of the Takeda clan, he was the Tiger of Kai, the embodiment of ruthlessness and power. Yet, despite his ruthless reputation, Shingen was not a mindless brute. He understood the importance of maintaining order, of keeping the people content. After the conquest of Shinano, he implemented a series of reforms, improving the lives of the common people and ensuring their loyalty. He was not just a conqueror, he was a ruler, a leader who knew how to win the hearts and minds of his subjects. And so, Takeda Shingen began his relentless march towards domination. His conquest of Shinano was just the beginning. In the years to come, he would face new challenges, new enemies. But for the moment, he was the Tiger of Kai, the ruler of a growing domain.
and a force to be reckoned with in the tumultuous era of the Sengoku period. His story was just beginning, and it was a tale of expansion, conquest, and relentless ambition. Have you heard about the time Takeda Shingen besieged a fortress and emerged victorious? It was the year 1565. The stage was set at Toishi Castle, a stronghold of the ever-resilient Tokugawa clan. Takeda Shingen, a man of strategic brilliance and ruthless determination, was about to launch a siege that would forever etch his name in the annals of samurai history. The Tokugawa clan, known for their military prowess, held Toishi Castle with an iron grip. But Takeda Shingen, undeterred by their reputation, saw this as an opportunity, not a challenge. He devised a plan so audacious, so meticulously crafted, that it would take the Tokugawa by surprise. Takeda Shingen's approach was rooted in cunning and patience. His army, disciplined and fearless, surrounded the fortress. They cut off supplies, creating a blockade that slowly strangled the life out of the castle. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months. The Tokugawa warriors, once proud and indomitable, were being ground down by the relentless siege. But Takeda Shingen, ever the strategist, knew that victory was not just about physical dominance, it was about breaking the spirit of the enemy. He employed psychological warfare, spreading rumors of an impending overwhelming attack. The constant fear and anticipation wore down the defenders, sowing the seeds of despair within the castle walls. And then, when the moment was right, Takeda Shingen struck. His warriors, hungry for victory, swarmed the castle like a tide of steel and fury. The battle was fierce, the resistance fierce, but in the end, the siege tactics, the psychological warfare, the relentless pressure all paid off. Toishi Castle, once an impregnable fortress, fell to Takeda Shingen's might. This victory was more than just another notch on his belt. It was a statement, a clear message to all who dared to oppose him. Takeda Shingen was not just a conqueror, he was a master of the art of war. His strategies, his tactics, his relentless pursuit of victory, were a testament to his ruthlessness and his brilliance. With Toishi Castle under his control, Takeda Shingen had become a formidable force. His name echoed across the land, instilling fear in his enemies and respect in his allies. The siege of Toishi Castle was but a glimpse of the ruthlessness and strategic genius that defined Takeda Shingen. What if I told you Takeda Shingen invaded an entire region and initiated a siege? It was the year 1572, a time fraught with conflict and strategic manoeuvrings. Takeda Shingen, with his insatiable desire for expansion, set his sights on the Hojo clan's territory in the Kanto region. This marked the beginning of the siege of Odawara. The Kanto region, home to the Hojo clan, was a prized territory. Its strategic position and fertile lands made it an attractive target for the ambitious Takeda Shingen. But this was not a task that would be easily achieved. The Hojo clan was known for their formidable defences and military prowess. Yet undeterred, Shingen advanced, his gaze fixed firmly on Odawara. The siege itself was a gruelling test of patience and resilience. Shingen, known for his tactical genius, employed a strategy of attrition. This meant cutting off supplies and reinforcements, gradually weakening the enemy. He understood the long game, knowing the importance of wearing down the enemy's defences and morale over time. Despite the formidable defences of the Hojo clan, Takeda Shingen's forces proved relentless. They utilised a variety of siege tactics, including tunnelling and the use of siege towers. It was a battle of wits and wills, a game of chess played out on a grand scale. However, the siege was not without its challenges. There were numerous counter-attacks from the Hojo clan, attempts to break the siege and regain control. These skirmishes took a toll on Shingen's forces, further escalating the intensity of this conflict. Yet, in the end, the relentless pressure applied by Takeda Shingen's forces proved to be too much for the Hojo clan. Their defences eventually crumbled, leading to Shingen's victory. It was a hard-fought triumph, one that further cemented Shingen's reputation as a ruthless and strategic leader. The siege of Odawara marked a turning point in Takeda Shingen's campaign. It was a testament to his military prowess, his strategic acumen and his unyielding resolve. 
but it was also a harbinger of the challenges that lay ahead, a foreshadowing of the turbulent times to come in the life of this ruthless samurai. What do you think could bring a mighty warlord like Takeda Shingen down? The year is 1573, and Takeda Shingen, once the unchallenged daimyo of the Takeda clan, finds himself in the throes of the siege of Nagashino. The battlefield is rife with tension as the Takeda forces confront a formidable alliance between Oda Nobunaga and Tokugawa Ieyasu. The siege of Nagashino was a pivotal moment in Shingen's military career, a stark contrast to his previous victories. Oda and Tokugawa's alliance was a force to be reckoned with, their strategies and fighting prowess overwhelming for the Takeda forces. The reign of bullets from Nobunaga's arquebusiers, a new form of combat, was devastating to the traditional samurai charge of the Takeda. The defeat was catastrophic, a major blow to the Takeda clan's dominance. But the battlefield wasn't the only place where Shingen faced adversity. As the dust settled on the siege of Nagashino, a more personal battle was brewing for the warlord. The circumstances surrounding his death remain shrouded in mystery, a riddle that has puzzled historians for centuries. In the midst of the conflict, Takeda Shingen's health began to falter. Some sources suggest he was succumbing to an illness, an unfortunate twist of fate for the once robust warlord. Others whisper of a more sinister cause of death, a covert assassination. The exact truth remains elusive, adding an element of intrigue to Shingen's already dramatic life. What is undeniable, however, is the impact of his death on the Takeda clan. His demise left a void in leadership, a vacuum that his successors struggled to fill. The clan's influence waned, their power diluted, without the iron fist of Shingen to guide them. The once mighty Takeda clan was on the brink of collapse, a poignant reminder of the transience of power. Yet, despite his fall, Takeda Shingen's legacy endures. His strategic acumen, his ruthless pursuit of power, his indomitable spirit, all these qualities have immortalized him in the annals of history. His life serves as a testament to the turbulent era he lived in, a period marked by power struggles, shifting alliances and relentless warfare. His story is a poignant reminder that even the mightiest can fall, that power is a fickle friend and that the path to glory is often fraught with challenges it serves as a reflection of the human condition, of our incessant pursuit of power and the inevitable downfall that often accompanies it. In the midst of conflict, Takeda Shingen met his end, leaving behind a legacy of power, conquest and ruthlessness. His story, his life and his death continue to captivate us, a stark reminder of the ephemeral nature of power and the enduring legacy of those who dare to seize it. How does a ruthless samurai like Takeda Shingen influence an era? Let's delve into that. Takeda Shingen, a name that echoes through the annals of Japanese history, was more than just a ruthless samurai. He was a strategic genius, a bold conqueror and a man of indomitable spirit. His life was a whirlwind of battles and conquests, marked by victories that expanded his domain and defeats that tested his mettle. In 1564, Shingen's conquest of the Shinano province significantly expanded his sphere of influence, a testament to his strategic acumen and military prowess. Just a year later, he launched a successful siege against the Tokugawa clan's fortress at Toishi Castle, demonstrating his relentless pursuit of power. But Shingen's ambition didn't end there. In 1572, he invaded the Hojo clan's territory in the Kanto region, initiating the siege of Odawara. This audacious move, however, led to the beginning of his downfall. In 1573, during the siege of Nagashino, Shingen faced the formidable alliance of Oda Nobunaga and Tokugawa Ieyasu. This was a major defeat for the Takeda clan, a setback that marked the beginning of the end for Shingen. Later that year, he met his untimely demise under disputed circumstances in the midst of this conflict. So what is the lasting legacy of this ruthless samurai? Takeda Shingen's life, marked by unyielding ambition and relentless warfare, shaped the course of the samurai era. He was a man who lived by the sword and died by it, embodying the samurai spirit in its purest form. 
His strategic genius, military exploits and indomitable spirit continue to be revered in Japanese culture. Moreover, his life serves as a stark reminder of the tumultuous times, of an era characterized by power struggles, political intrigue and unending warfare. His actions, his decisions and his life story serve as valuable lessons etched in the pages of history. Thus, Takeda Shingen, a ruthless samurai, left an indelible mark on the pages of history. His legacy, like a katana's edge, continues to cut through the fabric of time, reminding us of the samurai spirit that once ruled Japan.